Hello Eagles and welcome back to art class. Today I'm going to show you what I'm doing with our Create a Picture Book project. So I'm going to make my book about my dog Tiger and his cat. Uh, it's actually based on the true story of how we got our cat. So this is my dog Tiger. This looks quite a bit like Tiger here. I played around with some different ways of drawing tiger and the cat thinking maybe I would make the cat black and white or make them both solid black and in the end I decided just to draw them pretty much the way they look. The cat is a gray cat and tiger is a black and white dog so when I do my picture book in color I'll use their their true colors. But uh, anyway so that was the part of our project creating a character and thinking about a story so my story is a true story, so I'm writing about how we got the cat, and you'll remember we're using this outline, or you can if you want to use this outline for your story, starting with um, filling in the blanks for these different suggestions just to get our ideas flowing. So once there was, who lived, and always, then one day because of that, because of that, until finally and ever since then. So when you fill in the empty spaces, you'll have a great outline of a story. And you don't even have to use these exact words, of course, when you, when you really go to write your story. But this is just a way to help you organize your ideas. If you have another idea, you can just go with your own idea, but this is just a helpful outline. So I used this outline for my story about Tiger and Tiger's cat. Um, so mine looks something like this. Once there was a dog named Tiger who lived in a house with his family and always was lonely because he was the only pet. Then one day he met a cat in the yard. Because of that they became friends. Because of that his family liked the cat too until finally they let her into the house and ever since then he is not the only pet and is happy to have a cat. So in order to figure out what I'm going to do on each page, what pictures I need to draw and exactly what it's going to look like as a book, I'm using the storyboard and I think I included a template uh, last week on face on a on seesaw that has 20 squares. Uh, so each square will represent a page of your book. If you would like to make your book uh, shorter, you could always fold it in half, and then you would only have 10 pages. And that also gives you the option if you change your mind about something you draw here then you've got another side to practice on. But I'm going to use all 20 squares because if you remember how a book works, when you open a book, you have two pages facing each other. So these two pages, pages one and two, are actually paired together in a way that you could draw a picture that goes across both pages. So, you know, like you could draw an animal really large that's going across both the pages. Maybe it's a dog running really fast. <laughs> and you just want to show him, you know, uh, in action using both the pages. You could even just put a few words right here or a few words right here. Or you could, your next set of pages, pages three and four, then another option for how to do this would be to make your picture on this side and then all of your words over here or the reverse, obviously. You could put your picture here and words there. 
you can have small pictures, right, and words on every page. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. There's just lots of different options for how to lay out a storybook. So before we get to what pictures need to go on which page, we can think about how the whole story is going to use all the pages. So it's kind of a lot to wrap your head around. You're thinking 20 pages is a lot and I don't know if I need that many. Well, it's easy enough to spread your story out over more pages. If your story is very short, that's okay. You can just put a few words on each page. So this is how I'm going to organize my story using the storyboard and this outline. So the first line, um, the first prompt to get the story started is once there was a dog named Tiger. So introducing Tiger, I'm going to put on pages one and two. And then the second part, who lived in a house with his family. So the second set of pages that face each other are pages three and four. And so I'm going to have whatever part of my story is about living in the house with his family. I think I even added the word garden here because we, we found the cat. Um, she was a stray cat and she wandered into our garden. So I'm going to have a picture of Tiger in the garden here. And then the third line, and always, was lonely because he was the only pet. Well, I'll put that on the next set of two pages. And I might put one picture here and have some words over here. I might have just a couple of words and two pictures. However, it seems to work out. I'm going to use these two pages for that part. Okay, then we get to the then one day. Then one day he met a cat in the yard. All right, so here on pages seven and eight, see I've gone through and I've numbered all of these. On pages seven and eight, I'm going to have the part where he meets the cat. Okay, pages nine and 10, they became friends. All right, so that's the first because of that. Because of that, they became friends. So the first because of that goes here, they became friends. And then, because that's a really important part of the story, I'm going to let it take up more pages. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to say, but I'm just deciding that I'm going to use four pages for that. So two sets of pairs, right? Two sets. And then the next because of that, because of that, his family liked the cat too. Okay, so the next because of that, his family, like the cat too, is also going to take up this whole row here, all four of these pages. And then the end of the book, until finally, I have written, they let her into the house. So we let the cat into the house. We take her in as a, as a pet, part of the family. I'm going to put that here. And then the very end, ever since then, and I said, he is not the only pet and he is happy to have a cat will be in these last two squares. So now I know exactly where I'm going to put what part of the story, and I can write my story now and start to draw the pictures. Now, in this storyboard, these are very tiny little squares. They just give you an idea of what's going to be on the page of your book. We don't really want to try and draw a very detailed picture here but I might have a picture of tiger. I could just use circles and shapes to represent, you know, here's a dog. Um, with his tongue hanging out. <laughs> and I could have maybe a picket fence. We don't really have a picket fence, but it's a nice idea. And then maybe some sort of like flowering bush um, a ball, you know, he has toys, but it's just Tiger in the yard by himself with his toys. And, and he's, he's alone in the garden. That's kind of the, the way the story starts. And then I could have another picture of him 
maybe looking sad, you know, laying down with his, maybe I could just have him like, laying down all by himself, you know, just a little cartoon picture of a dog. And he's laying there with a ball and, um, I don't know what I'll put over here. Maybe just empty grass to show he's all alone in the yard, just laying there with his ball, looking very lonely. Okay, so I'm obviously thinking about this as I go. He was lonely because he was the only pet. Well, I thought about drawing us, but then, you know, it's all from the dog's point of view. It's from the pet's eye point of view. So I think maybe I would just have like our legs and feet, maybe just shoes. And, you know, I'll have like two of us here and the dog is between us and we're patting his head or something like that. You know, like we love the dog and it's great that we're all here together, but it just to him feels like maybe life is incomplete. Okay, then one day, he met a cat in the garden. So here, I'll draw him, you know, looking curiously at a cat. He didn't chase her. Um, they, it was almost as though they had known each other. It's very, it was kind of very strange because we had never seen her before. And you know, sometimes you kind of know the cats in the neighborhood. And the, feral cats or people's pets or whatever and um, she was definitely a new face and she was very skinny and she was not happy as a stray. I could probably make another book from her perspective how hard it was to be a stray cat alone trying to find food and be maybe chased away from people's backyards and um, but she came up to Tiger, and they greeted each other like old friends. And we were astonished. We had never seen this cat before. As far as we knew, he had never seen it before. But they were, they were buddies, and we think that she was just a very clever, she's a very smart cat, and she figured out how to get a home. And she got a home by making friends with the dog. So I could show them becoming friends, maybe touching noses. And she always would hide under our rose bushes and wait for the dog to come out. So I could have a picture of, of her waiting under the rose bushes. And then we started to feed her. I could have a picture of a food bowl. Actually, that was my husband's idea. Um, <laughs> he, he's sort of instrumental in her becoming our pet. So we we fed and watered the cat, and of course, then at that point, she's our cat. And then we let her into the house. We, we took her to the vet, got her shots, and gave her a bath, brought her into the house, and now she's our pet. And then I could have a picture of the two of them curled up together, you know, maybe something like this. Not that they really do that a lot, um, but sometimes in the cold winter time they do snuggle together, and it is really cute. So. That is what I want, to, want you to work on this week. I want you to um, finish drawing a character, figure out what kind of a story you'd like to have, either using this outline or just making up your own, and then using the storyboard, decide what each part of the story will, what, how many pages each part of the story needs, and then start to draw a little sketches to figure out what you're going to draw on the big book. Now, I have books for you. I can either um, leave it for you at school or I can show you how to make your own book. Uh, so next week, we're actually gonna be starting on the real book. We're going to be taking the storyboards and expanding our little pictures into bigger ones and putting together um, a real picture book. So this week, Focus on your character, your story. I know a lot of you already did that last week. And then figure out all the details of what you want to say and draw on each page.